Ladies and gentlemen, please notice that exits are conveniently located at the front and rear of this auditorium. When leaving the theater, we suggest that the exit at the front of the auditorium will allow you easier access to the parking areas. Thank you. Oh, stop your slow clap. <laughs> why are you, why are you mm. from Texas now? Because uh, I got to choose. How's <laughs> that for high energy? That's false advertising. <laughs> no. Oh, come on. <laughs> Does every actor that portrays a cop in the movie have to wear a fedora? You heard it here, folks. <laughs> Mike Field <laughs> is dead inside. <laughs> I'm actually trying to figure out who Brooklyn Decker's married to. Nice. Why? She doesn't, doesn't say it like She that. does say it like she that. She doesn't say it's it like stupid. that. stupid. Cowards. Cowards is what they're called, Mike. They're called cowards. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mike Field. I'm Mike Butler. And you're listening to the Forgotten Cinema Podcast. Each episode, we highlight a film that, for a variety of reasons, was forgotten by audiences. Whether it's because a more popular movie was released at the same time, or the movie simply didn't catch on with an audience in its initial run. We'll discuss what we love about the movie, or perhaps don't love about it, but we'll always recommend you revisit it. If you enjoy our podcast, please feel free to rate, review, subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you're listening to this podcast. Right now. Woo! Nice. Season six begins. We have survived season five. <laughs> we are doing Terminator T2. No, we're not. We're doing Terminator Dark Fate. Did you say T2 by accident? No, I did on purpose. Because <laughs> I'd want to watch that. Oh, say that's 4K a, Blu-ray looks nice, but that's a nice bike. <laughs> So we are doing Terminator Dark Fake because we're doing a little something special this uh, first episode of That's season right. six. We are doing a crossover event with, I don't know if you're aware of this, but Butler does another podcast called Two Player Bros. Butler, real quick, what's that about? It's about two guys who play way too many video games. Join me and my buddy Dave while we talk about all things video game related. We'll do news and review episodes as well as deep dives into your favorite video games. Okay, okay. Slow it down. I just wanted a brief one. Um <laughs> And then on that episode, you will hear me talking about Terminator. I forgot the resistance, resistance. Okay, which I have to start playing and I'm going to start playing very soon. Um, not a first person shooter kind of guy, but I'll get into it. You listen, you got plenty of time from when we're recording this, but from when we're, they're listening to this, our episode comes out a day later. <laughs> so tomorrow <laughs> you'll hear all about how I played the game, which I will start to play very soon in the distant past. <laughs> <laughs> which which is very fitting since we're talking about Terminator and you know leap from travel, the past time like travel that. and all that fun stuff. So why don't you let everybody know because this is a fairly new movie. Why don't you let everybody know what Terminator Dark Fate is about and then I'll jump right into the facts. Right into the facts. So synopsis facts. That's what Whoa. I'm saying. That's what I'm saying here. That's what you're saying. That's what I'm saying. All right, let me bring up this storyline. I'm gonna read this. I haven't read this yet. This is the main storyline on IMDb, but from a Claudio. Stop with the free shout outs. Stop with the free (laughs) shout outs. It's called Rando. Go. (laughs) (laughs) A young female Mexican worker, Danny Ramos, is hunted down by a virtually indestructible Terminator from the future called a Rev-9. However, she is protected by an enhanced human named Grace, who is also from the future. They flee from the unstoppable Terminator and out of the blue, Sarah Connor from the original Terminator series helps them out on the road. All three head to Laredo, Texas where Grace has the coordinates of possible support and where they meet a T-800 who is living in an isolated location with his family. The group teams up to try to destroy the Rev-9 and save the future. That guy's name is Carl, not T-800. Carl with a C. He does drapes. Cyberdyne Systems Model 101. (laughs) So uh, Terminator Dark Fate came out uh, last year. (laughs) Not even. (laughs) No, just true. November 1st, 2019. Uh, it has a runtime of 128 minutes. It's rated R and a production budget of $185 million. <laughs> this was actually the first R rated Terminator Dark Fate and s- since T2, right? Because T2 was R. Because uh, all the other yeah. ones were PG 13. Salvation which ended up PG 13. They don't count. They don't count, apparently. Okay. So we'll get into that. Yeah. Uh, but, anyways. It's opening weekend. It did twenty nine million dollars domestic, sixty two, and then worldwide two hundred and sixty one. But I'm going to tell you right now, it did not make business. It was a flop because even though I gave you the production budget one hundred eighty five and its total gross it was two sixty nine, marketing was eighty to one hundred million dollars. Yeah. That's that's how much they spent on marketing. So this did not make its money back. Although post Blu Ray sales and stuff like that, it could end up just breaking even. Well, but I yeah. think that's how all the studios, you know, figure out. 
if they're going to come back for a sequel or when, when movies don't perform well in the box office, but they perform well on home box office or I don't think they call it any of that anymore, but you know what I mean? At yeah. home and stuff like that. That's how they would determine whether they're going to come back with a sequel. Cause let's be honest, some sequels are made in particular just to do well on video sales. Cause they know they'll do well on the back end. Right. And they get that money anyways, because they don't share in that profit. Most of the time, that's not how the uh, contracts they work out with the talent and whatnot. But as well, we're talking about production companies. There was a total of six, in addition to probably many that we don't know about, that produced this movie. Paramount Pictures, Skydance Media, 20th Century Fox, Tencent Pictures, Lightstorm Entertainment, and TSG Entertainment. Lightstorm is uh, Cameron, right? I believe so. Yes. yes. So Paramount and 20th Century Fox split a chunk of this. And what ended up happening was Paramount distributed this domestic, but 20th Century Fox distributed this international. Tencent Pictures is a Chinese company. And they came up with 10% of the money. They actually distributed it, marketed it, merchandised it in China. They were responsible for that and earned all that revenue. So even this worldwide number right here is split up. So Paramount probably didn't make anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. Anyways. So you you had a lot of money behind this. A lot of money behind this. And I want to go back to the release date. I'll go to what was released at the same time. But this movie was originally meant to come out on July 26, 2019. But they moved it back to the 22nd of November. And the reason why they moved it was they, could, they wanted to avoid going up against Hobbs and Shaw. Well, excuse me. Fast and Furious presents Hobbs and Shaw or whatever it's called. <laughs> then they moved it up to November 1st because Wonder Woman, moved, Wonder Woman 1984 moved out of that slot back to June 2020. And as you listen to this now, you realize they have moved all the way back to August. August so yeah. home, and as we're recording this right now, that's tentative. So hopefully that stays. But, you know. Yeah, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows what's going on? This is going to come out before the, even the release date for Wonder Woman. So I got you. Not so I'm wondering if the, yeah, we come out around the same time that Tenet is supposed to come out. Yeah, so we'll I'm see what happens. About that. We'll see what happens. Yeah. Well, if we'll even be back to work. Hey, future us is let us know. <laughs> Gosh. Hey, guys, future Mike here with some interesting tidbits. So indeed, Wonder Woman is not releasing in August, but October 2nd, 2020, tentatively. And Tenet is releasing on September 3rd, 2020, tentatively. So even though this is future Mike, I really kind of still don't know. Back to your regularly scheduled podcast. Whoa. Okay. Sorry. Wrong movie. So this came out the 1st of November and I came up against Arctic Dogs, Boo! Harriet, <laughs> Motherless Brooklyn, and The Lighthouse. I have not seen any of these movies. Yeah, I wanted these to- movies just came out. Well, it's here's the thing. I-, I wanted to see. I, I really could care less if I see Arctic Dogs just because I'm not a child. Uh, but uh, I wanted to see Harriet, and then I heard it was just okay. And then I wanted to see Motherless Brooklyn, and then I heard it was just eh, nobody, a lot of people liked it. Yeah. Now, The Lighthouse seems to be like a movie that I need to just like, okay, put it on. And I don't know if that's a movie I could watch in the theater unless someone, I want to see it, but I know it's a tough watch. You know what I mean? And I'm not discounting it. So all three of those movies I want to see I'd eventually. <laughs> but when you hear like when you want to see something and you're you're interested in it and then you hear like kind of like oh I didn't like that movie it shades you and you don't want to you're like oh, man yeah. so you kind of like get bummed out so the week after on the eighth of November you had Doctor Sleep which I've still yet not seen and that bugs me I want to see it uh, last Christmas Midway which we saw together Butler Ugh. in the screening yes you watched Midway we watched Midway instead of Doctor Sleep we did and I still hate because Doctor Sleep before. was long and I didn't want I didn't know if we could handle that oh my god. Think- Midway is awful. You need to understand something. When we're watching screenings. Sometimes, <laughs> like I'm on the clock, so I need. Yeah, so who cares? You get yeah, paid. but if I get called out, I don't want to get called out of a movie that I really want to see and then get bummed. <laughs> I'm not going to go back. Midway, I could see me leaving and be like, I'll come back. These For movies. some reason, you did not watch this movie with me, and I can't remember why. Oh, I think I had to leave. I had to, exit. I had to get out of there because um, I don't even think you started it with me. I think I came in and you were like, "Butler, I have to do this." But I watched it. I, I know yeah. I watched it. Did I not finish it? You didn't watch it with me. Huh? Oh, you're right. I didn't ever. I never finished it. Wow, because I remember parts of it. You're right. I had to go. Somebody called out. I had to go work the box Boxes office. Or something, yeah. Like that, yeah. You also had Playing With Fire that week, which I we actually I saw it here at the house. Um, it was fine. It was fun. Kids liked it. Jojo Rabbit, uh, Parasite, and Jojo Rabbit and Parasite in a wide release. Yes, in a wide release. And then Honey Boy in a limited release. So you started getting some of these Oscar films coming in. On the 25th of October, which was bef- the week before Terminator Dark Fate, you had Countdown which is the app that tells you when you're going to die kind of movie. Oh, I did so well. <laughs> <laughs> Black and Blue, another one I wanted to see, and then I, I, I heard people that really didn't care for it. 
The Current War, Director's Cut. I've yet to see that. And another one I want to see. Jesus is King, and the IMAX limited release film that Kanye West did. Yep. The only reason I have that in there is because we actually showed that and nobody came to it. And Western Stars in a limited release, which is the Bruce Springsteen movie, which nobody came to as well. We had like yeah. a Fathom event for it. And, or no, we actually showed it. And we actually showed nobody it. Yeah. Came. Nobody came. I love these movies that everyone's like, oh, I can't. We get phone calls for some of these movies. Oh, you're going to get this? You're going to get this? And then we get it. And then nobody shows. Uh, so, you know. Terminator Dark Fate was directed by Tim Miller. You may know him from Deadpool. He also was a second unit director for Thor Dark World, and he was nominated for an Oscar for Go For Broke, a short. Story by James Cameron. You know who James Cameron is, right? Who's James Cameron? Well, Mike, funny you should ask, but he's responsible for Titanic, The Abyss, True Lies, Avatar, Aliens, among other things. Those are a lot of big movies. Those right? are a lot of big movies. Uh, Avatar 2, Avatar 3, Avatar 4, Avatar 5. They're all coming, right? Yeah, eventually. At some point. <laughs> uh, story was also, there, there's a ton of writers here, so, so bear with me. <laughs> There's also a story credit for Charles H. Egley. He is an executive producer from The Shield. He also wrote Piranha 2 The Spawning, which, which Cameron directed. He's also a writer from St. Elsewhere. He, did, he wrote Dark Angel. And he, was not, he won an, an Emmy because he was an executive producer for NYPD Blue one season or Ooh. a couple seasons. Story is also by Josh Friedman. He is writing the script for Avatar 2. He wrote Black Dahlia. He wrote part of War of the Worlds. And he's responsible for the TV show Snowpiercer. Based on the movie Snowpiercer, which I think is better, and I don't want to bother with the TV show, but regardless of that. I also heard that he is also now writing the Planet of the Apes new movie trilogy. There's another the first one. There's another one. But basically, it's going to be the Planet of the Apes. <sighs> All right. But they're really good movies, and I, you have not watched them. So I don't. don't. I, I, I've watched some of Rise. You can't just watch some of something. I, and I'm not like, saying, I can't do whatever I want. <laughs> <laughs> Now we've entered into the story slash screenplay portion of our program. <laughs> so I've given you three people that came up with the story. Now I'm going to give you two more people that came up with the story that are given story credits, but also wrote part of the screenplay. You had David S. Goyer. Now, if you probably know who David S. Goyer is, he's responsible for a lot of the DC stuff. He does a lot of uncredited rewrites. I'm going to give you some older stuff he's done. He did Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., the TV show. <laughs> he did the Van Damme movie Death Warrant. And he's also responsible for Blade. Mm -hmm. uh, Justin Rhodes also wrote some of the screenplay, did some of the story. He is in Grassroots, and he's actually doing the RoboCop Returns movie. I'm that they're cautiously doing. excited about RoboCop Returns. Uh, I the this the new one is it the same is it with uh, Kinnaman? Is he playing no, RoboCop? A new the guy. Kinnaman one. This is a sequel to the old school Alex Murphy. So RoboCop two. Um, is this Peter, to RoboCop Peter two? Weller ones. And Weller's not in it, is he? Yes. Peter Weller is in his seventies, isn't he? I think he's in his sixties. I don't know if he's playing RoboCop. Well, he's probably playing RoboCop. There's probably another one, but it takes place in that same universe. All right, whatever. Then you have just a screenplay credit. <laughs> this is never a good sign when you have over six to seven people that have responsible for the script because then you have you have issues and we'll get into that. But you had Billy Ray coming in to rewrite a lot of this stuff. Actually, I think Goyer only did one pass and then Billy Ray came in and did and rewrote a lot of this. And he Billy Ray has written Color of Night, Shattered Glass, State of Play, the remake. And then he was nominated for an Oscar for Captain Phillips. Was State of Play good? I remember seeing it and I can't yes, remember if I liked it or not. State of Play is... The Russell Crowe. One. Yeah, it actually. The, Did I like it? Did the, I not like? It? I don't the, remember. The English the, one, the it, the one it's based on, is good as well. But it's actually not. State of Play is really good. I remember where Ray Winstone's in that one, right? The remake as well. Well, was, uh, well Ben like Affleck's in State of guy? Play, right? Ben, am I thinking of the same movie? No. What am I thinking of? You're thinking of the what's the one Tom ben Clancy Affleck? one? No, 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 no. Ben Affleck's the senator, the congressman that's in trouble, and he's Russell Crowe's friend. Oh, you're yeah. right. Ben yes. Affleck is yeah, the guy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Rachel Rachel McAdams is in this yep. one. Yeah. Yep. No, it's good. You should okay. watch it. I've watched it. I just don't remember if I liked it or not. I'll try it again. Maybe All right. It's a forgotten movie. <laughs> <laughs> is it? It's the only yeah. way I watch them. Ooh, maybe it is a forgotten. So there's another movie because the State of Play, State of Grace, or State of Grace is Eddie Harris, but like Irish Gangsters. That's from the that's from like the late eighties. That's a really good movie. And that might be a movie we should do because I love that movie quite a bit. I will put it on the put list. Put it on this right now before you forget. No, just you'll do it when, I, okay, yeah, when I'm doing the edit. My pens. When I'm my doing pens. the edit, I'll add it because <laughs> I'm like, oh, all right, I'll add it now. I'm moving on to cinematography. We've talked about writing for about 20 minutes now. Cinematography by Ken Sang. He did Sorority Row, Project X, which is on our list. Deadpool, obviously a connection to Tim Miller, and Snatched. Not to be confused with Snatch, starring uh, Rapid. Pitt. Brad Pitt. Composer Junkie XL. He's done Mad Max Fury Road, Divergent, Deadpool, again, Army of the Dead, which is coming out. That's a Zack Snyder movie. Oh, that's the new. Okay. Yeah. I saw that. I was like, what is that? All right. He's also done a ton of other stuff. Batman uh, vs. Superman. Yes. Yeah. I, I just, you know, I grabbed five. <laughs> Edited by Julian Clark. He was nominated for an Oscar for District 9. 
He did Skyscraper Elysium and the 2011 Thing remake, which is I, the reason why I put that in there is because I remember we did Fright Night mm-hmm. and that was a two, that was a remake in 2011. It's just like like a reboot remake. It was just like, what do they have a bunch of them that year? That's right. So let's get to the cast. And quite honestly, it's not a big cast in terms of people with role, with lines. No, it, it sh- I think it's kind of classic Terminator. If you think about Terminator, it's a they're all chase films. Yeah. So they keep the cast really tight, which is yeah. nice. You don't have to balloon it up. So you had Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor. Um, do you remember her from Terminator and T2? <laughs> well, she's also in Dante's Peak, ugh. the better of the volcano movies. Ugh. What do you mean? Ugh. I, I hate Dante's How Peak. How do you hate Dante's hate Peak? Because it's me. not good. It, uh, the acting is not good. You are good. incorrect. The, the acting is, is not good. good. The grandma going into the lake That's the is best the part. part of the movie. That's the awesome. Dumbest, I love the that dumbest part I'm not, of the movie. You're absolutely right. The worst but, part but of the movie. You're absolutely right. But her death is deserved because Pierce, she does something stupid. The only good part in that movie is when Pierce Brosnan breaks his arm after the after they uh, outrun the volcano. Right. And they crash in the mine shaft. Yes. And he shatters his arm and they show it. I think that is some of the best makeup effect for a broken arm. Because every time I see that scene, I'm just like, oh, God, no. Well, I also but I will tell you this about that movie. I and like pushes that, it back in. Oh, well, that's fantastic. Ugh. Well, because he's Bond. <laughs> I, I also like the fact that um, they use practicals and they use models for all when the volcano and all the water and, and I appreciated that more. That's fine, yeah. But I also love when that guy dies, when they're when their buddy, the guy he's on the he's on the bridge and they're all the, the group of oh, people. And, waiting, yeah. and they're like, let's go. And he looks at him, he gives him that look, and then the bridge goes up and over, and you're just like, oh <laughs> <laughs> that's terrible that I like that, but I like that one. Anyway. She's also in Chosen of the Corn and Mr. Destiny. Arnold Schwarzenegger is T eight hundred Carl. He is the governor of California, former governor. He's in another bunch of movies. You can figure those out. Mackenzie <laughs> Davis is as Grace. She's from the TV show Halt, Ke- Halt and Catch Fire, which I could never get into. I watched the first two episodes. Yeah, and I, was like, hey. I could never get into it. It's because the uh, main character who I like, yes, Lee Pace. Lee Pace is such a was such a douche yes, in the first two episodes. He is. I was just like I don't know if I can. It was like he was auditioning. I can't root for, for him. Yeah. yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. You're right. She is. T- she is in Tully. She actually plays Tully in Tully. And she's in Blade Runner 2049. Uh, Natalia Reyes is Danny Ramos. She is not in a lot of big stuff. This is probably her first big thing, mm-hmm. but she is in a TV show. I'm, I'm assuming it's Mexican television. It's going to be a ninja. And she's also from Running with the Devil, which is a really, it looks like a, from the poster, it looks like a really bad Nick Cage movie. Um, but I would assume you probably hear more from her soon because this is her, or was a big role for her. Yeah. Then you had Gabriel Luna as Gabriel. Yeah. He's also the ref nine. He's the bad guy. He is in the TV show Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. He was also in Freeheld and Bernie. Then you had Diego Benita, oh, Benita Benetta as Diego Ramos, her brother, which I don't even know why I bother because he's not he's in the movie for a hot minute. He was in the TV show Scream Queens. He's also in Rock of Ages and Before I Fall. And then I have Fraser James as Major Dean, which I'll get to why I don't understand why he shows up. Oh, yeah, we'll, we'll, go, yeah. we'll get into him. Uh, he was also in Resident Evil, the final chapter, which I never saw, and Wing Commander, which unfortunately I did see. I have Resident Evil, the final chapter. Uh, when, like, I, when I bought Resident Evil 3 on Xbox, they just threw it in like, hey, hey go ahead, have it. No one's watching this. How many Resident Evils were there? What are there, seven? I, I mean, I don't I'm know. I'm asking because I don't know. I watched the first one, which isn't bad at all. Mm-hmm. I watched the second one, which is pretty bad. Yes. But they watch it better. And then I never watched them after that. They don't get better. I don't What's the one where that? it ends on top of the building? And they're like, and she's on top of the skyscraper in the future, or that she's in Raccoon City or something. Or maybe I'm thinking of Eon Flux. I don't know. Here's the thing. They all they all they like all blend like together. That. I don't know what the heck There's is one happening. Where she's on an aircraft carrier and it's all CGI and it's yeah. just like a yeah. video game. Yeah. And like somebody's dropping cargo. I was I don't know, whatever. Like I'm not saying the first one is Citizen Kane. But it's it, it looks like that compared to all the other sequels. And oh, no. They have an audience. People like them, but they're not really well done. Well, they have a good international audience. Oh, that's fine. Whatever. It's a lot of action. You don't have to listen to the dialogue. I just can't get into them. Just like I couldn't get into this movie, Butler. No, I know you like this movie. This We're movie. done with the facts. I know you like this movie. <laughs> and I never watched. And disclosure, I never saw this movie in the theater, probably because either couldn't see the screening because we usually just watch the screening. This was a IMAX movie. Well, for you and me, if we can't get to it, the first that first screening that we do. Yeah, it's, it's usually so busy. It's tough to get, you back, can't to get back into it. And then you just and then I didn't hear a lot of good things about it. It's the same thing that happens with all the other movies. You hear they're not. You want to see it. You hear somebody didn't like it. And then you're just like, eh. who said they didn't like it? I nobody. Nobody saw it. <laughs> well, nobody was coming out of that movie going, you need to see this, man. Surprisingly, you know, the only other person I know who saw this movie was our buddy who doesn't watch any movies. Greg. Oh, okay. Watch this movie. And even he liked it. Well, then that's see, But yeah. I know he likes that right movies, there. 
is an indication that I won't like it because Greg doesn't like doesn't like good movies and he <laughs> and he and he likes bad movies. You heard me, Greg. <laughs> and honestly, he doesn't even listen to this, so who cares? <laughs> um, anyways, so I ha- I have some problems with this movie. Now I don't know where you want to start because you like this movie. Why I like not? this movie quite a bit. So what? Wh- tell me what? What's your best? Okay, so what is something that you really in? Well, we should start start let's, off let's our about history this. of Terminator. Well, let's start off with we t- we teased it before. So this movie is a direct sequel to Terminator from the nineteen eighty four, and then T two. Yes. And then, then the the movies Terminator: Rise of the Machines, Terminator: Salvation, Salvation, and Terminator: Genesis are considered movies that, and the Sarah Connor Chronicles on TV, which actually was a pretty good show, but still, yeah, are all considered to be in alternate universes. So those are not supposed to be in this universe, right? Okay, so this is a direct sequel. So this is the third film in the Cameron se- uh, trilogy or whatever, right? What is the big thing you like about this movie? I mean, the first thing is you get rid of all the other ones. And I like Terminator 3, but it's the Rise not, of the Machines. Yeah, right. Okay. Rise of the Machines is, is, is good. I watched it. There are some scenes I really sure. like that has a lot, of, a, lot, a lot of issues. Right, right. But this movie goes back to, it's A, it's rated R. Which, uh, that, which is fine. I appreciate, I appreciate that. You've got back Linda Hamilton as Sarah Connor. Right. Linda Hamilton is the Terminator series. And, and one of the big things for me, like growing up as a young boy in the, you know, the late 80s, early 90s was, this, there weren't a lot. Get weird, is it? There weren't a lot of <laughs> female heroes. Of course, yeah. You yep. didn't have a lot. You had three. There's not enough now, Butler. That's true. Yep. In my opinion, you only had basically you only had three. You had not including like scream queens and stuff like that. You had right, right, right. Princess Leia. Mm-hmm. You had Ellen Ripley. Yep. And you had Sarah Connor. Yeah. And those were your three like heroes that even as like a young boy who's playing with guns outside and mm-hmm. action mm-hmm. figures and stuff mm-hmm. like that could kind of relate to and think of like, wow, she's awesome. That's what, really cool. What about Lady J uh, from uh, G.I. Joe? I was never a huge G.I. Joe. Pro- and that's also a cartoon. That's true, too. But you're right. No, but I'm just being, <laughs> I'm being funny. But you're right. You're but free. sure. Lady J and Red Sun. Hey, Why not? Red <laughs> Sun. Oh, okay. The Lady J, you're right. I agree. I agree. But so, I mean, that's a big part of what the Terminator films are missing. And even in, starting in Terminator 3, it's like, well, we killed her off. I was just like, right. all right. So she died of smoking too much from being nervous about the apocalypse. That's right. Okay. Cause it's Nick Stahl plays John Connor. Right. Right. And then Terminator Salvation, you just completely nix that terrible characters, a terrible John Connor that you can't relate to. What was that one? Who was the Connor in that one? That was Christian Bale as John Connor. Okay. And all he right. played it with right. a weird voice and he was unrelatable. He it was just in the wasn't, future. Right. Yeah. He wasn't the same John Connor at all. Right. I was right. Just, all right. Right. And then you've got Genesis, which I'd rather not talk about. <laughs> I, was, I love Amelia Clark, but. She was not a strong Sarah Connor. Right. She was too nice. And the rest of the movie just is, as you know, because yes. you did watch that with me. I did. Is what is that movie? That movie's yeah. not good. Yeah. So like Sarah Connor being back, having that attitude, she's badass in this movie. She's really good. I like her attitude. I like, and you're going to have issues. You're going to have yeah. issues with this whole thing. Yeah. I knew I was going to be bullied yeah. this whole time. I'm not going to be bullied. So I'm turned out to, <laughs> don't, 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 no, don't, don't, don't. I'm going to be bullied, guys. This no, not, you're, su- you're such a baby. You're such a baby. <laughs> but I think. I mean, she hasn't worked in a long, long time. She's hesitant True. to do this. I think she jumps back in, and I really think she's playing Sarah Connor again. I, I think she does a great job of jumping back into that role. Well, she had to do a year full of fitness training. She did. To get into this. And fun fact, because we kind of bring it up with Tom Cruise in Valkyrie. They thought that he had to have a fake butt. Right. She did have to have a fake butt. Did she, she really? actually worked her butt off. She got so fit and so thin that she didn't have a butt in the pants, so they had to put a fake butt. Oh, in, come on. Which she actually copped to in her own interviews. She was come like, on. I was so fit when you put the cargo pants on, you couldn't see that I had a tush, so they had to add one back. Why? On. Why bother? <laughs> oh, that's know. that's mm. speaking of Tom Cruise, you see he's gonna shoot in space. They that's right. That. Did you see who's gonna direct it? Who? The guy who's direct, who directed uh Edge of Tomorrow. Oh, um I can't remember his name right now. Lyman? Yeah. Oh, nice. All right, sorry. We're- <laughs> But I think Sarah Connor is a big part of it. I think the fact that it's an all-female movie, basically. I mean, Arnold is there because he has to be there. But, I mean, you have your, your all-female cast hero. And it's like, while I was watching, the first time I watched this, I did have a lot of issues with it. and I, I But I still really liked it. Okay. And we can get into what, what the issues were because I'm sure you'll have some oh, same issues. Oh, I'm not going to sit here and stay silent all day. Yeah, exactly. absolutely. Yeah. But while I was watching it the second time, I was like, you know, which I didn't realize the first time, which is great, is it's all-female. And it's like, no one made a big deal when this movie came out. And, and no one like poo pooed it because of that. And it's because well, I didn't like you. I mean, go ahead. Go ahead. I mean, maybe some people did, but it wasn't as big a deal. It wasn't like boycott this and stuff like Ghostbusters, but they didn't. Ghostbusters is not good. Butler. Change of exactly. 
and they didn't tout it as this is all female. This is this is True. It, and this is yeah, like that wasn't part recast. of the marketing. It's I got just, you. These right. is, is three strong females leading this cast, right. leading this picture. That one of them is going to be the future leader of the world, and it's like okay, are you totally into it? And you totally buy it. And it's like it doesn't change the movie. It doesn't. They don't wink and nod at the camera every three seconds about it. And it's just a really well done uh, female there's a, picture. There's a crap ton of lines in here that wink and nod at the last, all, all the Terminators they do. They redo lines over and over again. But that, I, that's, but a, I, that's a classic but Terminator. I, but I understand but, what yeah. you're saying. So I think that's a real reason I like it. I like a lot of the action. There are some action set pieces that I'm sure the same ones. I know you said you like the action. I'm I sure like the some, action. Some ones that I don't like that I'm sure you also don't like. Okay. Like moments, moments, yeah. But overall, this is a really fun sci-fi action movie that isn't a superhero movie. It's not Marvel. It's well, not, not Terminator DC movies comics. are never like that. And you're and right. I know, and it's just. A, right. I think maybe it's maybe that does shade why I like it so much. Is that I'm so sick of superhero action movies. Agreed. That being said, can we get Henry Cavill back as Superman in an actual Superman movie and not peppered in well, as Hulk? I think what I'm tired of is as PG-13 action movies or PG-13 superhero movies or like everything's right. You and know. even like I like Deadpool one and two and it's rated R, but yeah, that, it's still a superhero action movie and you still that action is still the same. As much as I like the Deadpool action in the first one and there's some stuff in the second one action wise, the shtick of Deadpool wears very thin with me. And I know what everyone loves it. It's funny, but like you can't rewatch that movie. No, the jokes aren't going to land. They're the not. Time. And, yeah. they're, and they just they're really annoying. And it's it's almost like it's like going to a party with a stand up comedian and they're just constantly working bits on you to see if you laugh. And at some point, you're just like, shut up already. I just want to drink. You know what <laughs> I mean? Like stuff like that. But back to your point. Drink aviation. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. Let me ask you this with in terms of Sarah Connor, because you were, you know, basically putting her on a giant pedestal. <laughs> yeah. Um, do you think it's. Do you think it's easy for an actress who hasn't played a role in over 25 years to actually tap back into that? Because I want to just give you an example of something and, and tell me if, if I'm off here. Mm -hmm. When you watch the diehards now, we talk about how Bruce Willis, John McClane diehard has become somebody who his wisecracking and he's like, oh, you can't believe this shit I'm getting into. Oh, yeah. And he's turned into this like grumpy old man in the fifth one. Do you get that? Same sense, not that she's saying grumpy old man, but Linda Hamlin is playing a role that she hasn't played in over 20, 30 years. So do you, do you, did you find that it worked or she could do it well? Or was there any time you're just like, mm, I like, found she did it incredibly well. Okay. I, I think there are some moments where, and I know you're going to talk about the dialogue. There are some moments in the dialogue where I don't think it's their fault. I think it's, and I, I do like, there's a lot of good lines that I like, but there are lines of dialogue also where I also rolled my eyes. And I think in those moments, it's tough, no matter how well you jump back into the characters to say it believably. I understand it's not that. Not a line that's just like, Ugh. I'll give you, I'll give you, I'll give you one right off the top right now. Now, I'm assuming people have watched this movie. If you haven't watched this movie, just you might want to go watch it because I'm about to tell you what happens at the beginning. And we always spoil things, but yeah. I just want to make sure people understand that. So John Connor gets killed in this. He's killed off in the beginning, and that's fine. I mean, it stinks. It's the fact that uh, Cameron complained that when Alien 3 came out, they killed off New and they killed off, I can't remember his name. Uh, Not Hicks. Hicks. No. It is Hicks? Is yeah, it, it is no, Hicks. No, is it Hicks? Hicks? Yes. Hudson's the other guy. Yeah, they kill him off in the, in the beginning of the movie, kind of wiping out everything that happened in Aliens. And even though he complained about that, he came up with the idea to kill John Connor off. And I get why you do it, because you, a, a happy Sarah Connor, as Miller says, and a bunch of them say, is not a very riveting Sarah Connor. Right. So you need an angry, bitter Sarah Connor moving forward if you're going to put her in this movie. I get it. But then she has that line where she's doing voiceover and she goes, a machine took him from me and I am terminated. And I'm just like, are you kidding me? That made it? That line? A machine took him from me. And I am terminated. There's there that I'm sorry, but you can be Lawrence Olivier and there's no way you can give that line without me cringing. That's a stupid line. Right. Yeah. And that's not her fault. And I, and as much as I love James Cameron as a as a director and as a storyteller, I love a lot of his movies and they're always fun. He's not the strongest writer. He's just not. There are lines in here in this movie and they might not be his line, but there are lines in this movie where I'm just like, are you what? Like it just pulls me out and it just. It got to the point where I'm just like, please stop. Like, just like when I know you don't want to say, come with me if you want to live, come with me if 
Oh, with Grace's line? She's like, come with me or you'll be dead in 30 seconds. It's like, don't. Right. Just say the original line. It's fine. You know, that, that's I'd not going to bother me. I'd rather me. have the right. callback of the original You know, right. and then and then she, Grace has that other line where she's like, you put 100 cops in front of a Terminator, you'll get 100 dead cops. Like, come on. I don't mind that, that line. That line sucks. That that, that, that's right. stupid. No, Nobody in the heat of the moment is going to say that line. You're not in the heat of the moment anymore. If she, I'm sorry, but she's walking towards cops. She's like, I'm going to tell the police. She's like, you go there. You're going to kill them all. That's what you would say. You wouldn't sit there and be like, you put 100. I mean, that, that, that line's not going to be that. There are lines like I just... They're great on the seat. They're great on the page. Mm -hmm. They don't make sense to me in the moment of the thing. So to your point, I don't. That's not something I put on Linda right. Hamilton because that's that's the line she's given. But you know, for the most part, I think she jumps back into the role well because it's not easy to jump back into a character sure. you did that long ago. People change, you change, acting changes. She hasn't acted in forever. Not just well, she's done this role, stuff, but, but she's she hasn't just been, done very sporadic right, things, right? Which you know because moved on she's yeah and she's probably made her money and she doesn't need to she is in a new tv show coming out on sci-fi channel called well, resident alien well now Alan that she's Tudor. done this it looks really funny. well now that she's done this of course she's gonna get more <laughs> yeah. stuff i get that but i think she does a really good job at jumping back into the role and and there are some moments where i'm like yeah right but overall i think she does a fantastic job well here's the other problem we've probably talked about sarah connor we've talked about schwarzenegger a little bit we've talked about the entire thing but this isn't their story not at all. And yeah. that's a problem because it's evident when you're watching it that this story is Danny Ramos's story and constantly her story is overshadowed by the fact that we still have to talk about Sarah Connor and the T T eight hundred, everything that came before them and her like, you know, her struggle and it's and and but she's a supporting character and she's given more weight in this movie than the main character. And that's to me, that's that where that suffers in terms of me watching the movie is that I don't I don't have an emotional connection to Danny Ramos in terms of wanting her to survive or just in terms of enjoying her as a character because she's playing second fiddle to Sarah Connor. So either make it Sarah Connor's movie or make it Danny Ramos's movie. Kill Sarah Connor off in like the first 30, 45 minutes, whatever. I, I, that's all I'm saying. See, I feel like this movie is a passing of the torch. So you do have to split that time a little bit and ease it back, ease it over to her. You're, you're passing the torch to Danny Ramos. Well, then and why? At the end of the movie, it is Danny Ramos's movie. And maybe if they, I mean, I'm sure they won't, if they had made a second, like a dark fate too, They're not kill off like Sarah it. Connor. I, I said that. They should have killed her off here. If there's a, it, I understand what you're saying. If it's a passing a torch, kill her off here. But then she has this line at the end. The end she has this line. When you find out that Danny Ramos's Grace knew her, she Danny saved her when she was mm -hmm. younger, and because she's from the future, and she sends her back, and all that stuff. Right, she's not the father of right or the mother of the savior. She and then, and then Sarah sit, Sarah kind of sitting there, and she's like, "She's John, you're John." It's like, what? She doesn't like, say it. Like she that. does say it like she that. Doesn't say it's it like stupid. That. It's, it's like fine. an. It's like somebody should turn around and be like, "Can someone get Grandma a bowl of soup or something?" Sit down. We got that already. Like. That's that line. That that line is so. You're being so overly I'm critical. Not, right now. That line <laughs> is so. That's, that's, that's that, that line bad. is so hit the nail on the head that I don't need it there. I don't need it. We already get that. I'm glad that you get it. But there are some stupid people out there who are not. How dare get you it. insult our audience, there, Butler? I mean, our audience gets it. But there, are, there are some Marvel fans who aren't going to get. It. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> sing. <laughs> there are some moments where I think that some of her acting is also played up to bet the fact that uh that she is an alcoholic and i know they don't show it too much True. in the movie but she admits that she is mm -hmm. and i i see that a lot when i'm watching this new performance is that that's definitely part of she slurs a lot of her words and she does talk a lot slower than like she does in real life and stuff like that which made me seem like that was something she was playing up as well maybe so stuff like the you're john like i can see that because she's got to vocalize her thoughts because she's always a little uh a little off on well in t2 she is when she's with John and T2 and they are like on the run and she goes to her, um, the Mexican family that she's right, friendly yep. with and she's talking like short bursts. She's got, that's how she, you know what I mean? Like yeah. she's already, I don't want to say jaded, but she's, you know, her man, she loved his died. She, uh, she's got a the weight of her now. shoulders. Yeah. Right. So I, under, so her, where she is now, I get that. I mean, I understand the choice to make that, to, to, to do that. I just, I can't, I can't get over the dialogue. It, it really bugs me. It really, it really bugs me. So basically the idea is that Cyberdyne's no more. And the fate of the world is always going to, we were always going to create our own destruction. We're always going to create our own AI destruction. And instead of Cyberdyne, it's replaced by Legion. Right. Did you like that? I mean, the name Legion? No, I hate the name Legion. Yeah, thank as you. soon as they said Legion, I was like, that is such an unoriginal 
yeah. computer name. Yeah. Everything's named Legion. Come yeah. on. Yeah. Um, but I do like that idea that no matter what, you're just moving that you're kicking, like Tim Miller says, you're kicking the can down the road. Sure. I like that idea. I like the idea that fighting these machines is inevitable. And the movie almost presents that it's not about fighting the machines. It's about, and it's similar to the Matrix, it's about joining with the machines. It's definitely about this war is just going to keep going on. You have to figure out a peace between the machines and humanity. Right. Which they kind of hint at toward the end, which you figure if they had done their trilogy, it would probably end with that because I think he says you're that. always I creating your own. That. Yeah. You're always yeah. creating your own device. Device. Yeah. 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 So I like that. I just, yeah, the name Legion sucks. <laughs> <laughs> well, it immediately reminds me of the TV show, right? Isn't the, the TV show Legion? Is There's that right? TV show Legion. Yeah. But that's about superheroes, but X, like X-Men that. and whatever, right? Are they oh. superheroes? It's with Dan, it's with Dan, um, Dan, or Dan Stevens, Dan Stevens. Right. Yeah. There's also another show called Legion. Okay. About angels and, and there's a production like company called Legion. I'm sure there's I a lot. Think. of So like, couldn't you come I up with something Legion else? Legion is a classic. You couldn't come. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's, a, it's a very unoriginal. They're called movie. Legion now. Like, ah, like when you that. have a writer's room with 20 guys and they're quote unquote from Tim Miller, some of the best sci-fi writers in the business. I saw that. That's the, your sci-fi name. Well, but the only thing, well, the note I saw because he got all these people together was that to come up with some stuff for the movie. And the only thing that came out of it, at least as far as I tell you, is the enhanced human is Grace's character who uh, she's enhanced, but she needs to take what well, they don't really explain like what she's taking. She just says like, I need, uh, what do you got? Do you have this? She rattles off a bunch of uh, drugs. Well, it sounds like the first thing she says is definitely like something for regardless, whatever she takes, when you it, got the, it boils when you got down the sugar to sugar thing. Insulin. Insulin. Regardless, yeah. whatever she takes, it boils down to a bunch of syr- syringes with some clear with some liquid in it, and like that. So as soon as she gets that shot, she's good as new. No explanation, but that's what that's what it boils down to. Well, they explain why she needs the shot. I get that, but it, but and that, my other favorite part is when she's working on her phone mm-hmm. and she opens it up. She's like, "What are you doing, future shit?" I like that because they don't ex- you don't have to explain uh, it. In any other movie, you'd get well, I'm bypassing and rerouting the wires. Well, I get so that, and sure. I don't want sure. the Star Trek techno babble. That's in Star Trek. I love it when it's in Star Trek because it's Jesus real and recent. Shit. You don't need like. I got you. I, I like that because it's just like shut up. I'm doing this. It's just like this is part of the story. Get over it. We're Terminators. We're just, we're just doing. <laughs> Get over we're doing, it. We're Terminators. We're doing hacking stuff because it's it's a robot. You don't need to explain it. Mm-hmm. So I I did like when she goes future shit. And I I like that she gives Sarah a lot of crap. I, I like Grace's character. Fine. Because I like when she goes when Sarah Connor's espousing again about it's it's your womb. They want your womb. And I don't like that dialogue. But then at the end of that dialogue, you get Grace going, if you're the mother Mary, then why do I want to, punch, uh, why do I want to yeah, yeah, punch, punch you in the face yeah. so bad? I hunt Terminators. Then I drink till I black out. Yeah. <laughs> this should be the Sarah Connor Chronicles new uh, tagline. Or why do I want to beat the shit out of you? That's what she says. Um, so, well, let me just go back to timeline stuff. And in fact, uh, let's go back to John dying. So why did he die? They, they stopped the war. So, so they stopped they, the war, but there were already Terminators out there, like the T-1000, the T-800, the one from Terminator 1. They've, they've just launched a bunch of Terminators. Okay. They didn't just put all their eggs in one basket. They've okay. always launched Terminators. Those are just the ones they had found up to then. So they're still out there. They're still out there, which is also a plot point they used in the Terminator TV series as well. Well, I mean, well, if your, makes sense. If your future though disappears, you're not there to send the Terminators out. So don't they just disappear? Don't they not exist anymore? Well, also, wouldn't John not exist anymore? I understand. I'm, yeah. I'm just I'm, no. Uh, I mean, yeah. That's that's the problem when you're doing time. It's yeah. like you have to stick with this. Is okay. Anything that goes back in time now is going to stay. They exist there, right? Because you can though, also go the other way. There's even so though the future doesn't exist, go, right? Yeah, or you can go the Star Trek route where it's you creating a new timeline or. Right, I got you. Yeah, it gets it gets complicated. No, I I understand. I do like the idea that there are others out there. I like the idea that her backstory is she's been killing Terminators for years because I always wondered about that, like. So they only sent one that always never sat well, well with me. But then she talks about how they send, she gets coordinates, she goes, she kills them. But she those were Terminators them. coming back for Danny Ramos. So this whole time she's been protecting Danny Ramos, not knowing it. Maybe they were other Arnold Terminators. She doesn't explain exactly. But why are they? St- I don't think they were the, no, because she could never go against the Rev 9s. I think this is the first Rev 9 model she's about to go up against. Okay, I don't get it. She's been killing the other Arnolds that were sent back in time to kill John, who were just all around. So they, you're saying that they weren't sent back at the same time. They were sent back in different portions of time. Right. Get John when you can. Gotcha. Okay, I gotcha. So they still should be coming back. There should still be some around, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> Leaving the room open for Arnold to come back. But I'm, I'm sure like they end it pretty well with, this is my last one. But. Oh, well, obviously. 
Jones. But yeah, you mean Carl? Let's talk about Carl. You've been with your wife for 20 years and she never wants to have sex with you? Because she was abused. Never? Never never wants to do anything? Ever? Come on. Maybe he takes care of her in other ways. There are more than one ways to please a woman, Michael. <laughs> <laughs> <sighs> I, I I like Carl. I like that they change it up. It's it's different. It's not as annoying as Pops from Ger- Terminator Genesis. I don't remember. I uh, blocked that out. Exactly. Which one was that? Pops was his well, the Arnold that went back in time to save Sarah Connor in the eighties. Right. Okay. And then trained her up to the nineties. And oh right, right. Oh right, he's right. Smiling, and really jokey, and like this is my daughter. And yeah. It's like, yeah. yeah. But I, I like that Carl's still pretty much the Terminator. And it's like he's grown that conscience. And it's the fact that he wasn't reprogrammed to be good. He just became good. Well, because his mission was over and right. he had to just had kind no of purpose. figure out. Yeah. And he had to figure it out on his own. Find and his own purpose. When right. he had to find his own purpose, his purpose was to be good. Right. And I, I like that idea because that then seeds also the fact that you can change a Terminator kind of. Well, you're talking kind of about, you're talking about, you know, their plans for their trilogy, which was, you know, the inevitability of, of peace man machine and machine whatever, being yeah. being at peace with each other, which I don't think we're going to get that because I don't. They didn't no, we're going to get another reboot. Is that so, what they're doing? Uh, I don't. They haven't announced, but they paid. I know that there were a lot of rights issues with this film. Yes. And it took forever to get a production company. They had been wanting to write this for so long for a Terminator movie, and they didn't know who was going to get it. And then James Cameron even said at some point that he was interested in doing it, but the rights were all over the place. And he was trying to get the rights back to him. Mm-hmm. And I don't think he got the rights back to him. But, you know, when Paramount and 20th Century Fox and Skydance and everybody teamed up, I think Skydance got the rights. Okay. They said they asked James Cameron, listen, we have the rights. We're not giving it to you. Yeah. But you can make your but movie. We absolutely would love it if you wanted to come in. And he was like, yes, I've got to make my 80 avatars. But let's get the story. <laughs> let me let me let, let's come up with the story. Are they still not shoot? They they have all the productions are paused at this point. But they they're getting back to production. They're one of the first ones that are going to go back into production, right? Because it's mostly just one person by themselves in the soundstage, okay. which makes it safer than most filming. Great, uh, conceivably. Conce- yeah. Um. All right. So where do I want to go? Well, we're talking about Carl. I mean, I like that. Like the dog likes him. Uh, yeah, they, they the, the little subtle nods like that. Right. I think his his funny lines of dialogue. He's got a couple of like, eh. but I, I think overall they're funny and they're they're deadpanned. The drapes. Well, I like the drapes. Yeah. I like that he's cutting up the, the lime and the corona. Yeah, right, right. I like the pictures of his life leading up to like you could see in the pictures. Right. Apparently they built an entire cabin for this movie. <laughs> they kept trying to find a cabin that already existed. They found one for a movie set on a movie lot, like someone owned real realty in Texas and built a cabin. And they hated the cabin, so they tore it down, built an actual cabin, and decorated it and built it. It's a yeah, but and they shot like, this. Go. They didn't shoot a lot of this in, in the United States. Not a lot of it. No. That part, the part they did. They shot a lot of it in Spain, yep. which doubled as Mexico because mm-hmm. it's not safe to shoot in Mexico. Mm-hmm. Um, which they actually, to make sure it was authentic, they got uh, Diego, oh, her wow. brother Diego, the guy who plays Yeah. Yeah. And because he he's American, but he spent a lot of time in Mexico City because his family's from there, they used him to go, okay, yeah, that's authentic. That's oh, authentic. Yeah. That looks yeah, like yeah. it, which I thought was kind of cool. And they, they shot in Bolivia, I believe, as well. They were they were overseas yeah. a lot. Yeah, I, that's yeah. where it's cheaper. No, I got you. <clears throat> I got well, not anymore. I got <laughs> uh, I got you. Um, so, what were your problems with Carl? I uh, I didn't I didn't I didn't the T the it's it's tough because he's seventy one years old, so it's really tough to watch a Terminator movie where Schwarzenegger's not doing a lot. Yeah, I I, I the mid to uh anything that's farther or he's in the background he walks yeah he's got a limp yeah oh yeah he's like oh. yeah he's on i mean i don't know i heard this so i'm not gonna say if this is true or not but i know he's on dialysis uh a lot because uh because you know kidney problems well, uh, he's got like a, at least a triple bypass yeah, uh, it's, yeah and whatever it's it is what it is you, you get you get older you know, stuff happens and, yeah. and i understand that and, and I, if that's not true that's not true i'm not saying it is but he's 71 years old and he's in, he's, you want him to do, you, you don't want to see, you, you want to, you, you want to see these action stars do the action stuff. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? You want to see that. And it's very difficult uh, when you watch him to believe that, okay, he's, uh, 
he's really doing a lot of this. You know what I mean? I don't know. There's a there's a believability factor that's the suspension of disbelief takes a hit when you notice that he's an older man, kind of like watching The Irishman and they de-age everybody in The Irishman. Yeah, that's doesn't really work. And, yeah. and you can tell, even though Robert De Niro is playing somebody in his 40s, you can tell he's not walking like a 40-year-old. We yeah. talked about that. And it's great to see them. It's great to see them again, working with Scorsese and all that stuff. I, I don't, I'll, you know, I'll see it. You know, if T does another Terminator movie, I'll watch it. But it's still, there's, like I said, the suspension of disbelief, there's holes poked in it. And it, it just takes you out. It takes me out of watching there's, the movie. There's a lot of stuff that uses the T-800 where he's absolutely CGI, mm-hmm. especially in the dam. The dam sequence is a lot of, not uh, like the underwater scene where he's mm-hmm. fighting the Rev 9. It's cool in theory, but it does, it looks very video gaming. Yeah. The cargo plane sequence, I don't like at all. The, there's just the fight. I don't like the fight it, in the cargo. It's like plane. a the cargo plane sequence feels like I'm playing like Uncharted Five. Exactly. You know it's what I mean? Like it's just so and ridiculous. <laughs> and I know they built a fuselage and did some scenes where they're walking, but not enough. They covered it with too much CG. And sure. th- that's why my one note is I don't. It sucks that I have to say that the Mummy with Tom Cruise did anything better. Oh, uh, when it goes out of the plane. That plane sequence yeah. is awesome in the Mummy because yeah. they actually went on a plane fuselage and went oh. up and down. I'm, you're not getting Arnold. Tom to Cruise do that. is crazy. Exactly. But that's great. That's why Th- that sequence is really right. good. Yeah. And this movie, the best action scenes in this movie are are real. Mm-hmm. And that scene is too CG. But when you get Arnold in the dam, yep. it's a lot more of him. And what's nice about the T-800 more than I think other aging action stars like Bruce Willis or Indiana Jones and stuff like that yep. is... He's a big, heavy, slow machine anyway. Anyways, okay. So I think the he's action a lot. Model. Exactly. Yep. So he's just hitting the dude with the stick. Yeah. And you leave Grace to do the uh, the chain stuff, which I yeah. think the chain stuff's really cool. Yeah, she's fine. I like to, we didn't, so we'll get to Grace. Yeah. We can talk about Grace. But um, no, I, I agree with that. I, the action doesn't bother me. I think, uh, would I like less CGI? Yes, I would. Yeah. Um, I know that the scene with the, when the, after the cargo, where the plane crashes in the dam mm-hmm. and the, uh, Humvee is the Humvee. Humvee is the Humvee the is underneath the water. That's all from Cameron. He he gave he had a bunch of scenes that he gave Miller. Mm-hmm. He's like, yeah, you try to use these. I like the jeep. The jeep scene is cool, and the yeah. jeep scene is mostly other than the fight with the Terminators, mostly real, yeah, and practical. And I think that's awesome. You're talking about in the water. As soon as they get on the dam, they crash. Right from right. crashing to being in the water, right. yeah, it's mostly all physical, and that's well, cool. Uh, underwater, that's what, like that stuff. You're talking about when they're hanging. So but when they're dangling, yes, that's real. When they drop, that's real. They actually drop the jeep with them. Okay. There. When they're in the river, they're they're in a pool, obviously, not right, in right, the river. Right. And it's filling up, but that's actually the actors in the in the thing okay. filling up and getting right. out. All right. Which again looks better. It's and the, 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 the stunt actors. No, so like As Linda Hamilton. Linda Hamilton holding her breath and getting okay. out of that right, okay. thing. Yeah. Right, yeah. Apparently she was game for most of her stunts. But not by I read somewhere where like they she didn't like it when the stunt woman was doing her stuff because it wasn't like her movements and it kind of bugged her. Mm-hmm. And so then I think she said, like, I want to do more, more. of this stuff. I, I didn't work out for a whole year to not, yeah. to not do <laughs> this stuff. Yeah. Um, but I get it though. I, I understand both ways because if she gets hurt, then you're screwed and you have to yeah. you know what I mean, cut production and find trick ways where she has to be sitting down if she has a broken ankle and stuff like that. So I understand why you don't want her to get That's hurt. That's like the classic Temple of Doom. Mm-hmm. Uh, in, what did he break his back, right? For Temple of Doom? In Temple of Doom when he's on the He always thing. breaks something in one movie, but I think Temple of Doom was his back. And they did the entire uh, cave sequence fight with a stunt double. Yeah. And they just cleverly hid mm-hmm. where he was. Yeah. Like, so you couldn't see his face. Yeah, that's that's like that today. that's probably the story that they tell actors and like I want to do my own stunts. Like, well, let me tell you something about Temple of Doom. <laughs> you ever hear a story about how Harrison Ford has a metal spine? Oh, man. <laughs> but Oof. no, I um, appreciate that. I like the truck sequence at the beginning. Yeah, with when the big the, uh, big rig. Yep, yep. That's classic Terminator as well. Ooh, Apparently, he, the driver of the big rig. Or uh, well, you're talking about the the not the big rig, but the the it's, giant it's the scoop digger, truck. Yeah, the I didn't know. Yeah, that. yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what to call it. <laughs> Apparently, bulldozer. Yeah, the driver for that. Which, by the way, they attach dune buggies to the front of all those cars, which I thought was really cool. For front and behind to shoot it. To shoot it. So if they wanted to do a reverse on the truck, they take the dune yeah. buggy part off and attach it to the back. Gotcha, gotcha. But the driver for the scoop truck was the original driver for the big rig in Terminator Two. Oh, nice. He's right. like, yeah, that was made by that made my career as a stunt coordinator, and I get to be the big rig driver in this too. I was like, oh, they, oh well, he probably awesome. had yeah clout to yeah. Like, let me do it. Yeah. Oh, great. So I thought that was cool. No, I, I the action is not the problem. Right. Uh, my problem is is my problem is dialogue. My problem I I don't mind the story. I don't. I mean, the story is fine. I just I, my biggest problem is dialogue and just the whole idea of I wanted this to be more of Danny's story. 
Mm-hmm. And, and, and I, but I understand why you watch this movie. You're, in this, you're watching this movie because Linda Hamilton's in it and Schwarzenegger's in it. You're watching it because the originals have returned and, and that's great. But there's still a story to be told. And the story, the script is Danny's script. It should be her story. And see, I feel it like it's not even seat. Danny's story. I think if it's not Sarah's story, it's Grace's story. But but then again, you don't get enough of Grace. You don't get enough of 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 her story. And then she's gone. And then she dies. I like that she dies. But she's like Michael Bean's character. So in, in Terminator. Exactly. Which I always but that's really not liked. his story. It's Sarah Connor right. in the first one. So it's you know what I mean? So it's But even in the original Terminator, you focused a lot on um who's the main character in first Reese. who's the main character in terminator it's it's sarah connor okay who's but the main okay you focus a lot on kyle reese almost as much if okay not more. he's her supporting he supports her right who's the main character in t2 in t2 yeah is it connor or is it sarah is it john or sarah i think it's sarah still okay so she's the, so in the third one she inevitably is the main character in this one but it's has nothing to do with her it's not she is not she is not portraying a main character in this movie. The story is not her story. It's Danny's right. story. So that's, I'm saying that I agree with you that it's, she deserves to be the main character right. in, term, in this movie, but it's not written that way. They've created a story around Danny. And to the point where at the end of the movie, when she's like, it's John, you're John, blah, 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 she's going to be, she's going to be somebody who quote unquote trains Danny. Right. So she's going to be in support of Danny. Mm-hmm. It's, I think that's the passing of the torch. I got you there, but it's th- what if it was Sarah and John together and Danny oh. was still there, but now then you killed John at the end. So Sarah's left. With, would you like that better? Because then it I would don't be know. Probably maybe more. I, I don't think, movie. I don't think you can, I don't think you can do John Connor anymore because of Cyberdyne being killed. And they, John Connor was the one who rised up against Cyberdyne. Regardless. Yeah. You have right. to kill so, John so, Connor. right. So I, I understand him dying partly because Eddie, Eddie Furlong's not coming back, even though he's like, I'll come back. I'm not get a lot of money. It's like, yeah. Okay. Ed. No, he's done some stuff. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's, he has other things to worry about. Um, but so I get that why you don't have, I don't mind him dying. It stinks because you know, you just had a whole entire movie where he's rescued and then he's right. killed off, but whatever. I think that is also something that scared a lot of people away from this movie. That he died? Yeah. I mean, I didn't know he was going to die at the beginning. I, right. Because I, I saw it like the first day, but I had read that there is a shocking twist mm. and I'm watching it and you know, you flashback Eddie Furlong's in the movie. I'm like, oh, how's he going to incorporate it? He's not in the trailer. And mm-hmm. they killed him off. That shaded a lot of the movie for me the first time I okay. watched it. Okay. Like the first half of the movie, I was just sitting there with my arms crossed like, fuck this movie. <laughs> I don't want to watch this movie. <laughs> Sucks, it sucks, and I think one of the other coworkers who really likes Terminator as well was working with you, and he came in and was just like, "How, how is it? It's, fuck, it sucks, it sucks, it sucks right now." I'll tell you if it gets better. I mean, it's not bad, but I'm mad. And it took me like half the movie to get over it, and then this time I'm watching it. I've made peace with it. I understand why they do it because at the end of the movie, you're like, "Yeah, he he had to go." Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But I think people reading about that because I know the spoiler came out like right away, and people were like, oh, uh. so people were probably like, "I don't want to watch this movie now." Yeah. Um. <laughs> well let me ask you this then why do you think it's forgotten because you picked this movie i think because they kill off john connor i think so that reason i think the other terminator movies have been so bad like, why didn't do mo- yeah why didn't it do business basically yeah genesis is so bad okay how it bad is, is it it is <laughs> it is one of the worst big budget action films i saw in theaters you know maybe ever Ooh. for big big budget it is really really bad. i'd have to watch it again i don't remember a lot of who played uh reese the guy who played Bruce Willis's son in uh Oh, Jai Courtney. Jai Courtney. Right, yeah. right, yeah. Oh, right, just, right. Who played the, Connor in that? I can't remember the guy's name, but he was an evil John Connor. It's, it was it's not a good movie. Man. Okay. I can't <laughs> I rem all the thing I remember is the end when Matt the, Smith comes out and he's this Terminator from the future who time travels and is from another dimension. Well, I remember him, but I remember no point to the story. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> where they where they where they're starting the eighties, they go to the nineties and they jump to the present because hey, it's cheaper. <laughs> all right. Well, anyways, back to the original the, question. The, that's so bad. Salvation is really not good at all. Mm-hmm. People have just been so and a lot of people don't like T three. It's all right. I, I like T three. It's not bad. But they've just been so like, all right, yep, yep. I don't care anymore. This has not been good. It'd be the same thing probably if you tried to do another alien movie, unless you did it really low budget. It's this success, successive sequels have just been so bad mm-hmm. that you watch this movie. And, and I think 
it's worth watching. I think the action is good. I think the story is good. You're so burned out by bad Terminator movies. You're yeah. just like, I don't want to watch this. And then you find out they kill off John Connor, the John Connor that you like from T2. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of people like me grew up watching this movie. Mm -hmm. I've probably seen T2 easily over 40 times. I've probably seen yeah. it close to 50 or 100 times. Yeah. Like I, I, I was really mad watching John Connor. It took me a while to get over it, and I love movies and can justify them. Mm -hmm. People that aren't going to really analyze it and think about why they did it for story reasons are just going to be mad about it. Yeah, and stay mad and just go. Eh, I don't want to watch this movie. Yeah, it's it's tough. I don't, I don't, I understand why you want to reboot and and remake and revisit and redo all these characters that you grew up with in terms of Terminator and Aliens, like you say. But at, the, but at the end of the day, when you do that, you're beholden to the past and you are, whether it's subconsciously or you overtly do it, you have to make callbacks and you have to reference stuff. And, oh, isn't it cool? Like the whole stuff of Prometheus and, and, and how it's always references in the Alien trilogy. And that's great. But is that really is that really the path to take to tell a really cool story? Can't you just do your own original story and then just, oh, that's just like that movie. Oh, that was like, you know what I mean? It's it's still your universe. I think that's why people didn't like Prometheus because it didn't do enough callbacks. I I, I get that, but yeah. that doesn't mean they're, they're right. That doesn't mean the well, audience is correct. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean? That's just, it's, that's the thing. It's like, I don't, like a movie like, I'm trying to think of a movie that is, I watch it, it's, it's singular, it's in and of itself, but like you can, it reminds you of another movie. You're like, oh yeah, it's like that. Like, I don't know. Like, I like we love the John Wick movies. Right. But I think we love we like the John Wick movies because the action is really good. Right. But it's not like it's 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 an original story. It's not it, it may have allusions and references to other movies, but it's its own thing. I think we're burned out by reboots and and re and sequels and but remakes. Just, you're never gonna not get them. No, and I, I think I this, understand is, this that. is a well done one. And I think that if you're just saying there can't be reboots and remakes and mm -hmm. I'm never going to like them. It's just like, that's fine, but they're just going to keep coming. I understand that. So it's just, I'm fine with that. But I'm, I I like stuff like, how about this? You saw The Hustler. You ever see The Hustler? Paul Newman. Um, I think I have. Paul Newman, Jack, Jackie Gleason. Probably not. A long it's time. a black and white movie. Okay. But The Color of Money with Tom Cruise and Paul Newman right. is a sequel to The Hustler. Okay. So the character that Paul Newman plays in The Hustler carries over. Is carries over is, and he he's a different character in Color of Money. He's, he's this like older mentor kind of guy, but like it's like that kind of sequel. Is, he's actually the same He's the same character. character. Okay. That kind of sequel I like because okay. it's not it's a character it's carrying over a character. Mm -hmm. It's not taking everything that happened in The Hustler and like I maybe let me put it this way. Maybe I enjoy remakes and or sequels excuse me and reboots or whatever that doesn't reference old material but references old characters and pulls old characters over so if you pull like, you can't do it with terminator obviously but let's just say for the sake of argument you pulled sarah connor from the terminator movie and you put her in another movie and it doesn't have anything to do with the terminator franchise mm -hmm. but it's her character's arc moving forward that to me is a little bit more interesting now granted you're not going to do that because terminator is such a great movie right i understand that but that's what I'm talking about. I think those type of remake, those type of sequels and pulling are more interesting to me when they pull characters into another setting than it is just kind of carrying on the same plot. Because you're just doing the same plot over and over again. The whole reason why the last three Terminators didn't work for you mm -hmm. is because you're because you're thinking of Terminator and Terminator 2 and T2 and they're so good that what you're just rehashing stuff. You're redoing stuff that doesn't work. So yeah, because Salvation doesn't rehash. The well, the, the salvation like, oh, goes into the, few, into the well, and it just, quote unquote present. It's just yeah. really poorly done, right? It's just the story is like they tried to do something different, right? With Sam Worthington's character and and this weird John Connor and the future and open heart surgery in the desert, and it's this just not good. <laughs> but do you know what I'm saying? I get what you're saying. Oh, yeah. I just think that there are movies where you have to understand that Terminator is going to happen regardless, right? Right. So as far as I'm getting another Terminator movie. I think this is maybe not as good as you can get, but this is pretty good. It, is it better than the last three? Uh, yeah, that's fine. I can, I can, I can, sit, I can say there with that. And I, I'm, you let's for the sake of argument, you give this movie what an A. Like if you said like a A plus a A minus that kind of thing, I'm, I'm probably give I'm, it a B plus. I'm more in the lower B C round. That that's probably where we are. The dialogue, the, the the script really bothers me. The dialogue really bothers me. And when I say by script really bothers me, just the whole idea of whose story it is. 
and the dialogue really bugs me. But I like the action. Mm-hmm. I enjoy the action. I know that we haven't talked about it yet, but there was a, not a fight, but there was disagreements in the editing room. And, right. They were all gung ho right. at the beginning. And then right. and Miller, James Cameron tried to take control. Basically. I guess Tim Miller had a cut or oversaw an editor cut that was like two hours and 50 minutes long. And uh, Cameron saw it and didn't like it and just st- came into the editing room and just and changed it. Now, that's tough because it's his movie. It's his series. It's he started the whole thing. Right. So it, that's a I can understand Miller saying, like, what the hell, man? But what are you going to say to that? I think it's- Miller admits that later on because they asked him about working in another movie like this again. He's like, I, I could not do another movie where creative controls wrestled from me from. Yeah the creator of the franchise because it's tough. There's you, nothing you can you do. You can't, you can't, you have to just be like, it's yours, man. I'm, 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 you have to have that. And that's tough to do. Right. Uh, but, but you also have, he also had a problem with Deadpool too, right? He got, he did. That's yeah. so he's, he's he, probably a little I've got a pattern to work. Yeah. yeah. But, but that's fine. I mean, if that's how you want, but then go do your movies, exactly. go do the movies you want to do, do your standard, do go get $5 million and do the film you want. Perfect. Know what, know what you want to do. Stop trying to collaborate and that's fine. But, I understand camera stepping in because would I mean would you be able to do that? And be like, I gave you the reins of this thing, and look I, what you did. I think that's why you always see George Lucas on the set of every Star Wars movie they've done so far. You have to get his kind of nod and approval kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. He it directed a scene in Solo. Yeah, because he was probably like, well, here's how I do it. At some point, you just got to go like, go for it. That's George. Well, hands tied. What am I yeah. going to do? I mean, I think I would just be so honored to be working in Terminator or a franchise that's right. like that right. with the creator that I'd I'd probably not be as. No, I think I, I but it is going surprising back, James Cameron wants a shorter cut. <laughs> <laughs> well, now the solo thing, that's Ron Howard, right? Uh, the scene he directed was when Ron yeah, Howard was on it. You're yeah. Ron Howard. You don't you don't have anything to worry about. Like if you're somebody who's an up and comer and Joe Lucas wants to direct, you're worried about, oh, my God, he's going to take over. I'm going to lose my he's job. Like, yeah. Ron Howard's like, go ahead. I can I gotta tell you, please go ahead. Yeah. And they're friends. So exactly, that's fine. Yeah. yeah. You have to have that confidence in, in, in your own abilities. Mm-hmm. But I agree with you. If you if you got the opportunity to direct Terminator, the next Terminator. Yeah, I don't care Cameron's. how many movies I've directed. And Cameron, I'd be like, yes, yeah, go ahead. If I'm sitting there and I'm directing and then James Cameron's like, oh, you should do this. I'm like, okay, yeah, what's I'd up? I'd be taking notes. Absolutely. I'd be like, oh, that's what That's you, a okay. resource. Are you doing that, James? Absolutely. I don't care if I've directed 50 movies up to then. Ab- I mean, now, if it's a script that you wrote and you were, like, it was your baby and he still gave you notes, you would be like, yeah, right. Uh, 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 okay yeah no no yeah. i like that i like did you think that, I, as long as you can irrational like absolutely I, I don't why would you say no to that yeah. i'm sorry that's that's really obtuse of somebody to be that way you have to you have, come on these guys have done it before jesus <laughs> <laughs> but uh yeah i get that so, so we did want to talk about there. there is one line i really like you talk about not liking the dialogue yes. i have a couple things that i do like okay but um, I think I got to all the lines that I hate. One of the lines I really like is I calculate the 74 percent chance that humanity will descend to the barbarism. Also, this is Texas. The guns. Yeah, yeah. I guess <laughs> you just keep this around. Even without a rogue AI taking over, I calculate the 74 percent chance that human civilization will collapse into barbarism. In the dead eventuality, these weapons will be vital to protect my family. Also, this is Texas. I saw the note where the gun behind him in that scene is the, is, is, is the original one from the first one. Yep. Yeah. So that, that, that cool. that's fine. I, I get that. That's that's fine. Um, but we wanted to talk about that one character, the major that shows up. Right. So at the end of the movie or towards the end of the movie, she has some kind of resource that is going to get them their EMP, which is such a like. That's another thing that came and went real quick. Here is your device. It's gone. Uh, okay. Because that was such a Deus Ex Machina. I'm glad they got rid of it. Right. It's like, mm. But he shows up and it's almost like we're supposed to know this dude. Like we're supposed to know the history and like he's part of the whole franchise. Well, here's the thing. As soon as I saw him and I maybe you, I don't know if you thought this, that was Miles Dyson's uh, son. Uh, oh, son. that, that would have been better. Right? Yeah. And then you hear his name and it's not. Yeah. So I'm wondering, and it's not in the deleted scenes, at least in the Blu-ray. Is there a scene where maybe his mom took her original name to hide him? I don't know. Or he changed his name so the Terminators couldn't find him? That would be nice to understand. Exactly. Because yeah. if he's not Miles' son, I don't know why he's in it. Why is he helping? Why is he Why is he breaking major protocols and giving her a, a device? I mean, and he knows about the Terminators. Yeah. Uh, he's yes. got to be Miles' son. Yeah. And it really bothers me that he's not. Well, maybe maybe he was supposed to be. Yeah. That that part really, yeah. that part really pissed and me off. And if that was... if if. They just told his name and then you and then you were able to say like, oh, that's my son. OK, fine. I'm fine with that. But like he is such a character in this movie that 
I don't understand why he's so important. He's so powerful to the yeah. story. They and get he, them all the tools. He gets them on the plane. They're fine. <laughs> Clear. I'm like, oh, They're what? refueling the plane. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That whole thing. I just, I didn't get it. Yeah. Agreed. Uh, I also wanted to point out that I think Gabriel Luna is really, really good in this movie. I think he does a fantastic job at Rev Nine, and I like the way Rev Nine's written to be even more human than Grace, basically. You know, Grace and him come down at the same time. It's mm-hmm. the Rev Nine that's more personable to people, nicer to people, well, doesn't do you, beat people up. Well, for the most part, until well, he needs to. Well, he, yeah, when she says he can't replicate people unless he touches them, and it's not okay, a good then way. He's killing, yeah, 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 yeah. But like when he's not, if they're not part of his target, he's leaving them alone where she. Well, who does he leave alone in terms of? He walks past the guy in the highway. Uh, there's a deleted scene where he's in a he's in a bar, yeah. just scanning for them, and he just walks away. He goes gracias and walks away from the waitress. Right. I just and he's personable. Right. Like he knows how to communicate with human beings. Right. You know his whole uh, three tours in Afghanistan. My whole body's a weapon. Expect a big ping, brother. My whole body's a weapon. Save it for the ladies. Sorry. Metal hip. Two tours in Afghanistan. Thank you for your service. But when he goes up to the, I love right, when he goes right, to right, right, Texas Rangers. Right. He's like, "You here for the shit show?" Yeah. I like how he says, "Say." Yeah. Because that's what the T one thousand is. Yeah. Changes yeah. line. You boys know where I can get a helicopter? Yeah. Why would they know where to get a helicopter? <laughs> I'm sure they have their Rangers. <laughs> but I like that. I also, when I watched this movie the first time, when he goes into the UAV building. Yeah. I remember in the theatrical cut when I saw it in theaters, but there was a little bit more to that. And I, I thought we were introduced to her character and another guy first, and then she leaves. And then he takes over. Like they introduce those people in the. You're talking about the Border Patrol in the Border Patrol. Yeah, the UAV people. For some reason, I have it in my head that there were there was another scene with those guys before he kills them. I don't know. And I'm not I don't know. <laughs> I know in the deleted scenes. That's an entirely different scene. Oh, really? Where Gabriel Luna's in her uncle's house. Okay. And he's killed all the other coyotes. Okay. And he's sitting there on a, a sofa chair, hacking into the drone. And he orders both the Mexican border patrol and the United States border patrol to, to kill them. Okay. And there's a whole action scene where grace is jumping from cover to cover, blown out kneecaps because Danny says no killing. Right. 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 Humans. And there's this whole other action scene and the uncle gets shot and killed, which is why only his son is with them in the border patrol. Oh, okay. Okay. So I thought that was kind of interesting that they yeah. were doing an alternate version of that. And then like, what? Well, well, he busts into the server farm when he's like, like they don't explain the exoskeleton part of it too much. Like it can be separate. Just the fact that it can separate and yeah, be its own, how, but it's not how, as strong. Yeah. And here's the other thing. When they show those exoskeletons in the future, they've got tentacles and they don't have really them in this thing. one. Why isn't he using them? Yeah. Apparently, they don't say it in the, if you watch the documentaries and stuff, they say those are Rev 7s and they're seven feet tall. Okay. So they can't infiltrate. They're not infiltrator units. They're fuck shit up units. They just okay. go and they destroy shit. Well, like Sentinels kind of thing yeah. from my adventures. Yeah. So he doesn't have all those capabilities. Right. Which I didn't realize, like going back when they showed the scenes of like, oh yeah, those are like eight feet tall, like giant. It's almost like you wanted a separate movie that came out and it was just about Legion and the history of Legion, like just in the future. And then you at the end, you tease it like, oh, we didn't tell you this is part of the Terminator universe. And like you almost want something like that to be come before this movie. Yeah, there's not a lot of explanation about Legion. Right. You almost wanted to you almost want a different and don't do a prequel, but you almost wanted a different movie. You know what I mean? Kind of like Prometheus or, or kind of like not Prometheus, but what was the next second one they called? But see, it's almost like, and and they, everyone knew it was coming. But like when she gives birth to the xenomorph yep. kind of thing, like you almost wanted that. Like yeah. Towards at the end, like oh, we didn't like they should. That would have been really good. Like they could have had this whole other story. You know, it's it's separate. It's about Legion. It's about the future race being they're fighting. And at the end of the movie, you have like we got to go back, and then you just start doing the at the end of the movie. That would have been awesome. Which yeah. They should have just done. <laughs> <laughs> but you, but because you. It's like I keep asking questions. You keep having the answers because they clearly knew them. Right. But like you want that. You want to hear that. Right. And I think this you movie see that. stands alone without all those explanations. But they do leave some stuff that you want. Yeah. And I think that was another problem with Genesis, which is why people are turned off here. They added so much stuff like that Matt Smith character jumping yeah. between dimensions and all that. Well, that's a different universe. man. When you have a writer's room and you make three, yeah. you, you're planning on a trilogy and obviously it didn't land. You're leaving stuff. For later, let's save it for later. It's yeah. like don't save it for later. Yeah, put it all on the on the tell line the right there tell the best story you can yeah. tell right here, and then worry about 
whatever you're going to do later, later. Right. Do the best story you can right here. That's all you need to do. I think that makes some of the best sequels is when they put everything on the line. They don't have, they don't know what they're going to do yet for the sequel. And then the sequel comes out and they're like, now I have this idea. Sure. Because they've put everything they had into one, one thing. Right. Right. Like aliens. Uh, Say what you want about alien three, what they do. That's fine. But they don't like they did aliens. Like that was going to be the movie Mm -hmm. that that's it. Right. And it's, we're done. We're over. We're done. Then they kept going. And so they, then they made the changes they need to make, but they weren't making aliens with the idea of, well, the third one can be that because because that sacrifice is what you're doing in the original story. Right. Tell your story. Worry about sequels if that comes to it later. It's actually better when you have trilogies, when you have standalone action film trilogies where you have separate directors and creators for each movie. It, it does yeah. because because then you were. But look at let, Star Wars. Well, OK, fine. <laughs> If you, well, maybe that's such a saga. There's such a a small, but just such a small percentage of writers and creators that can do that. That half, most of the time, you're getting fails. You're getting, you're getting less than. And at at some point, you have to realize you can't do this. Mm -hmm. He can do this. I guess your point says why it's forgotten. Uh, Makes sense. It's only last year, so uh, it, you know it's I not even last year. It's like six months from now. True. This is the newest movie we've done. It is. I was just gonna say that the but most current movie. I chose this movie a because I wanted to do a crossover with two players <laughs> of forgotten cinema because it's so easy. There are so many movie based games, right? And I this is a movie that I mean it was hard for me to find the Blu Ray. Really? Yeah. Like I went on Amazon. It wasn't the first thing that popped up. Mm-hmm. I, I went to Target. I went to Walmart. Mm-hmm. Couldn't find it on their shelves. And granted, things aren't being stocked as, as regularly as, as they True. were before right now. True. But it took me a while to find it. And I was really surprised because this is a big movie that came out just six months ago with some big stars. Yeah. And I was like, this movie, I remember being really mad at the beginning, but I think that turned a lot of people off. And I think it really deserves a limelight. And it, it, it's also shaded. I, I will absolutely admit it. My love of the Terminator franchise and growing up with the Terminator action figures right. and, and loving the universe and the films. Absolutely shades my thoughts on this. Sure. But that being said, that's coming from someone who absolutely hates Terminator Genesis, doesn't like Salvation at all, and only kind of likes Terminator 3. So why is that okay for you to do? But when I tell you that I like Crystal Skull and I'm shit on by, I, oh, monkey scene, this scene, this scene. Why is that always thrown in my listen, face? I always tell you that I really like Crystal Skull. Right. I just don't like the monkey scene. There's no, I like, there's wrong with I'm with scene. you on the refrigerator scene. I'm with you on okay. the chase through. The canvas. Right. I like Crystal Skull, man. There are so I I because it's on Netflix, so I'll just oh, watch yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Because I've been trying to do this thing where like I want to put it on because I want to watch it as much as I watch the other ones. Because the, the other ones, you watch them all the time. Right. But and so so I keep like just throwing it on there and watching stuff. There are so many iconic moments in Crystal Skull. Like when he shoots, when when they're at the, the gravesite and Mutt. And he shoots that he holds the gun out and Mutt's like, you're a professor. And he's like, part time. I'm like, that's oh, yeah. awesome. I, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting there going, I can't believe I forgot that line. So <laughs> there are so many. St- you're going back to I school. Know. I know. There's so many good things in that movie. I don't know why. We got, uh, we're talking about Terminator. I'm the sorry. The whole chase with the box, the Area 51. What's up? The chase through Area 51. Yeah. And also, now granted, I know this is when the monkeys come, but that whole scene when they're on the the cars and they're fighting and they're sword fighting. That, song, that scene is awesome. I know. And they blow up that one wheel or whatever and it's on like, fire. That, like, and that's an action scene that's planned out. That's an action scene that, I'm sorry, nobody but Spielberg does. Mm-hmm. And that's why I am really not excited about Five with Mangold. I'm sorry. I'm not. I'm not excited. I, I just, am. I am. I mean, you can't pay Spielberg enough because he's so rich. He doesn't care. But, but uh, I don't they know. They should have paid him whatever. They, they should have said, know. whatever movie you want to make, we'll make yeah. eight of your next I, movie. I'm sorry, but it this 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 movie is going to kill the franchise. It's going to kill it. Well, if it's supposed to be the end cap of the franchise and the original director. And you don't have the original. Yeah, it. it's we've gone off the rails, but it's, oh, it's really not. I'm not happy about that. Well, that's at another all. thing for Terminator Art, bringing it back. True. James yeah. Cameron's in this. Yeah. He that which, which is Which is a selling point for me. When you said, hey, we're doing Dark Fate, that you want, I was like, I'll watch it. I wanted to watch it when it came out. Right. I missed it. I didn't catch it. Um, you know, and and my my complaints about it are are I they don't I mean, I, I like the action. Cameron, I mean Cameron I, can do action. But I, I honestly I I wonder what type of movie this would have been if Cameron directed it. Because I think I probably would have been into it more. I don't I cause say what you want about and I just sat here and told you I didn't like dialogue, but say what you want about it. 
I still love True Lies. I love all his, uh, the Abyss. Right, one of my True notes Lies. is, can we just get a True Lies 2 already? Oh, they're too old, though. They're too old. Well, that's old. the thing. It's like some of those scenes between Sarah Connor and Arnold, I was like, I like it. And then Terminator, I was like, Jamie Lee Curtis is in shape. She was doing Halloween. She was beating up they Michael Myers. Let's go. They can't do it. They can't do it. Elijah Dushku's not that old. I, in it or I, have her, I, like, with different character cast I'm glad he's doing a movie. I'm glad he's making Avatar. And he really doesn't need to do anything because he's, you know, super rich. But I'd love to just see him do like another just action movie, straight up action. Doesn't have to have Arnold in it. Just put somebody in it, new person in it, make a new, but just a straight up action movie because there's not a lot of people that can do his type of action. Well, I also think that there's something to be said about the fact that Terminator 1 and 2 are so good. I think not just because of the action, but there's a lot of humanity and actually like a lot of emotion in the story. Right even though it's all one long action scene. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe this would have maybe a little bit more humanity, something that maybe you think it's lacking if Cameron directed it. I think a lot of times in, in, in newer movies, we're so, we're so in a rush to get to the action. We're so in a rush to get to the, 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 the good stuff that right. you don't realize that you need the other stuff to actually want you to root for people. I, I say this all the time. Where is the Lost Ark is... I think it's inarguably the greatest adventure film of all time. Right. And there's no action set piece in the last 20 minutes of the movie. Now let that sink in. It's you, you can sit there and ra- remember all the great stuff with Raiders, but it doesn't have a final action piece at the end of the movie of 20 minutes. It right. doesn't. And, and, and you can sit and people say, Oh, I love that movie. It's got this scene and this and this and this. And this. It's like, so I'm telling you, right. You don't need that. You, you, somebody we we're talking, I was talking to somebody who was just watching sorcerer. I think I told right, you this. Yep. And he was like, he was saying it was you know, the the open. I told him, I said, it's a movie that sucks you in. And we did Sorcerer in the first season. It's a movie that sucks you in because when they're driving the dynamite in the movie, you're like, oh my God, they're going to make it. But the first 45 minutes to the hour of the movie is the setup of all the characters. Right. And he and he was like, oh, it's a little boring. Oh, I get that. I go, but that's why I love 70s movies because they take the time to make you fall in love with those characters and a root for them. You need to do that. And, and Jurassic Park needs that. Yes. Like, Ceratops scene. It needs the yes. Brachiosaurus scene. You can get, there's, Yes, you Terminator can have awesome needs that act, desert scene. Right. You don't if you have four great action scenes, that doesn't mean you need to do eight in the next movie. That's the reason why I don't like Jurassic World, because it doesn't do any of that stuff. And 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 not just Jurassic, I don't want to pick on that one way, but all action movies, you gotta take the time to build up your characters. You got to. It's just it's, that's the whole reason people they may not know it, but the whole reason people love movies is because they love characters. And they may not realize that when they're watching the movie. But trust me, they that's why they root for them. Yep. That's why you love Sarah Connor. You know what I mean? Because you have developed that a relationship with her. Yeah. Yes. The yeah. Matrix needs the Nebuchadnezzar scenes. Yes, absolutely. All right. So let's 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 wrap it up then, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you will hear me now. Now let me ask you this, because I'm doing I will be playing Terminator Genesis, or I have played it. Terminator Resistance. For, Terminator Resistance, excuse me. Is that video game in the alternate universe so this game takes place in the terminator 2 universe this is the terminator 2 future so you're the old classic judgment day okay after t2 happened after so wait a minute so this is skynet has taken over this is the terminator 2 flash forwards you're playing through that future okay all right okay that's fine as i just need to know that so we'll find out how i thought and how i felt and i guess we'll talk about that and all fun stuff that's right so if you guys want to hear Field talk about Terminator Resistance and his love of first-person shooters, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can join me, Dave, and Mike on our two-player bros crossover, which comes out, if you're listening to this on this release day, comes out tomorrow. We'll go over Terminator Resistance. If you want to play it, it's available on PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and PC. Two-player bros, you can find it at twoplayerbros.com or wherever you find your podcast. You can also find it at forgottenentertainment.com. So check us out there. It's a great podcast. Deep dive on Terminator Resistance. And if you like our podcast, why don't you take that one? We're on the same places. <laughs> same place. <laughs> well, right now, I mean, I don't, there's some forgotten cinema podcast.com. You can go there. Obviously, we're on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. We're everywhere. Uh, you will be on forgotten entertainment.com as well. But yeah, so that's it. Uh, join us next week. We are going to be moving on with season six. We're going to be talking about the action comedy. We're talking about the movie Stretch, which you have not seen. It was the number two pick on our original list of. It was uh, starring Patrick Wilson. It's a movie that I believe Joe Carnahan did, and they didn't know what to do with it, and they put it on Netflix, and it's actually pretty good. Chris Evans is in that as well. Oh. So yeah, uh, I'm, I'm hoping is it Evans like or Pine. That. Oh, Pine, maybe Chris Pine. Who cares? One of the Chris's. <laughs> uh, so yeah, so that's us next week. We're doing Stretch. Thank you for listening to our Dark Fate episode. I'll see you tomorrow, I guess, on our their two player bros episode. That's right. Um, as always, I'm Mike Field. And I'm Mike Butler. And this has been Forgotten Cinema. Hasta la vista.
baby. <laughs> The machine took him from me, and now I am terminated. And then I get blackout drunk. Oh, I also like the line, if you want to keep your phone in a potato chip bag, keep it in a potato chip bag. <laughs> <laughs> Does that work? Uh, maybe. Uh, try it out. I just like the idea of, yeah, don't take it out, everyone. <laughs>